It's your boy Young Fly, and you're now listening to NAN Sports Talk Radio. Yeah. Let's play the game. Give it all out of the line. We're gonna go home. I'm a veteran. When they bury me, they gonna bury me a champion. When it's all said and done, it's gonna be evident that I played the game the right way. Another level win. They gon' label me a legend in this game, a champion. Nobody do it better. I'm a champion. No matter what the weather, I'm a champion. Been waiting all my life for this moment. I'm a champion. I'm a beast, I'm a god, I'm a champion Popping champagne, ain't nothing change with how I'm handling All the losses and the injuries, I'm still battling All the best players in the game, I'm still managing The game clock before we stop, it ain't no panic I love our Welcome intro I love our intro to the podcast Yeah, I do love our intro too It's a good intro Now let's just jump right into it all right. Hey, things we're going to talk about today. The XFL. Yeah. A couple NFL stories. Yeah. Ha, what? So I got let's it. talk about the XFL, Nick. Actually, I got an NFL story for you to start off with. NFL this story huge with Huge to me. What? So, Chris Jones is a free agent, obviously, right? So, top Chiefs players on the defensive line that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you some top names, right? So, you got... Okay. Tom Bahali, obviously. Everybody knows Tom Bahali. He was one of the Old pass school. rushers uh 2009 area. Glenn Dorsey. Yeah. I remember G- Glenn Dorsey. Jared How Allen. You? Jared Allen played for the Chiefs. He was a Chief for four years. Damn, I didn't know that. Dontari Poe. I remember Dontari Poe. Neil Smith. This guy was in the 80s and 90s. Okay. And Chris Jones, right? Damn. So now, uh, tackles. Neil Smith leads in tackles in his first four years. Chris Jones <laughs> is about half of his tackles, two fifty three to one thirty six. Now, what's that tell you? Chris Jones not making a lot of tackles. It tells me that it's a passing league now. Mm. Yeah. Here's another one. Tackles for loss. Jared Allen, 56. Chris Jones, second place for the Chiefs with 37. Okay. Is that just is is that just Jared Allen's time in Kansas City for 4 years? Okay, and Chris Jones for 4 years? Yeah. So this is all going to be their 4 years, their first 4 years in their career, right? Mhm. Sacks. Jared Allen 43. Chris Damn. Jones, 33. Now here's the craziest one. Quarterback hits, Jared Allen, 39. Chris Jones, 72. Jesus Christ. He, the, and that's the most in Kansas City. Like, it, J- Jared yeah. Allen's second. Passes defended. Jared Allen, 26. Chris Jones, 20. Forced fumbles, 14. Jared Allen, 7. Chris Jones. So, not as many forced fumbles. Interceptions. Bobby Bell is number 1. Chris Jones is number 3 with 2. Bobby Bell has 8. So, based on those stats, do you think... Jared Allen, I mean not Jared Allen, Chris Jones is replaceable at this point. How many years has Jared, Chris Jones been in the NFL? This is this is his fourth year. It's his fourth year total. Yeah. What kind of money is he really asking about? He there's no real talks about how much money he's asking about. Um, I'm thinking maybe 18 million a year, probably. Have you watched the show Ballers from yeah. HBO before? I have heard of it. Did never you watched it? Okay. Yeah. So in the show, I feel like this is probably like as accurate as it gets. Yeah. <clears throat> in the show, The Rock is like the sports agent for this like really good defensive tackle mm-hmm. that's in the NFL, and so 
the defensive tackles, they're like talking about contract. And he's like, look, I can do this, this and that. And he's like, okay, that sounds like a good deal. The dude's homeboy. If I'm, if I'm not, rem- if I'm remembering this correct, dude, homeboy jumps in and is like, nah, dude, you worth way more than that. Yeah. That's stupid. Don't just take a low number. You need to get that money, man. Mm-hmm. So like what ends up happening is this guy does contract negotiations based on comparable players or where he wants to be as a player. Yeah. So like, for example, like he, like one of the things they talk about is like Gerard McCoy and you talk about, you know, like it, it would be like a Jared Allen, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or a Khalil Mack, you know what I'm saying? There's like things like that. So basically the original idea is he was set up to be paid like somebody else. And then like later on, he's like, nah, man, I'm going for this. And so they start like really trying to get more money out of the contract and mm-hmm. he starts aligning himself with like the top two D linemen, the like NFL. It's pretty crazy. That's what just makes me think of is like, because if he's like wanting himself to get paid like crazy amount, you know what I'm saying? That's when it's an issue, right? Yeah. Because the skill is there. Is he replaceable? I mean, technically, yeah, mm-hmm. you can find somebody to replace him, you know? Is it worth trying to find somebody to replace him? And possibly not. That depends on the money. Because we all know Patrick Mahomes is getting paid. Chris Jones may not exactly be on top of the list for getting paid because he's just a defensive tackle, mm-hmm. not the best quarterback in the NFL today. Yeah. And I mean that, by the way. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL today. I love that. Mm. I love it when people say that. I, I just don't think there's any uh, debate about it. Like Lamar Jackson is a great running QB, but you can shut it down. Yeah, He's an okay passing QB, and he could possibly be a good passing QB next year, maybe even great, but he's a running QB. If he doesn't evolve to being a passing QB, his career will be limited to probably like five years, six years tops. So who would you say the top 10 free agents are right now? Top 10 free agents? Yeah. Oh, man. I would need, like, a list put together for that. All right. I'll give you. So I'll just tell you, and you tell me if you agree, starting from 10 down. So number 10, Justin Simmons. Who is that? Exactly. I don't agree with that one. Byron Jones. Number Yes. Nine. Yes. yes. Byron number Jones eight, is probably one of the better cute cornerbacks in the NFL. Number eight, Jadavion Clowney. Yeah, that's a good one. You know what I'm surprised with is that Darius Slay's not in the top ten. You think he's going back to Detroit? No. Detroit's not going to pay him enough. Yannick mm. and Yoku. What position? I think he's a defensive tackle. Is that the guy from Jacksonville? Cleveland? I think. Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Chris Jones. I, I don't know. Yeah, really good, yeah. Amari Cooper. After last year? No. Here's where I don't agree with the list. Phillip Rivers. What number is this? Fourth. No. Tom Brady. No, absolutely not. Drew Brees. I could see Drew Brees being really high on this list. What number is Drew Brees? Second. And who's first? You know who's first. Good. Dak Prescott. Really? Yeah. Here's what I disagree with the list. Tom Brady and Phillip Rivers are old. Yeah. If Tom Brady and Phillip Rivers go to a team, you have a shelf life. Yeah. It's probably less than four years. Yeah. Definitely, I doubt there's any possibility it's over that. Yeah. Tom Brady, uh, from what we know, if he doesn't resign with New England, which I'm not sure if he's not. Who knows at this point? Yeah, it's like it's so up in the air. Tom Brady's at a level right now where he's just trying to leave New England. Mm. Maybe because he doesn't like Bill Belichick. Or maybe he's just trying to prove himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially if he wins a ring. I think that's what he's trying to do is win a ring somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, if Tom Brady comes out and wins a ring somewhere else, Mm -hmm. 
he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Even if he only comes in next year and throws for 4,000 and he wins a ring. Greatest as go. long as he wins a ring. Got to win a ring. I mean, I think he's the go right now. Just to be yeah. clear. I think he's totally the go right but, now. But if he leaves the team and he goes to another team, yeah. go if he wants a Super Bowl. Hands down. Like, there's no arguing at that point. We're talking about seven rings with two different teams. How many QBs have won Super Bowls with two different teams? I didn't, couldn't tell you. Think about it. But think about it, though. Like, literally. Like, let's... I'm going to look that up now. So, how many QBs have won Super Bowls with two different teams? Peyton Manning. The only one. Okay. Is that it? Peyton Manning. And just to be fair, Peyton Manning was, like, not good in the second one. No, he's terrible. You know, it's crazy to think about. He could have had three. That's winning. Four. Craig Morton and Kurt Warner are the only other quarterbacks to start for a second team. But he's... Kurt Warner did 1-1 with St. Louis. Yeah, but he... Or was it LA back then? I don't know. With the Rams. Yeah. And then he went with Arizona. Yeah. Who's the other one? You said Kurt Warner and who? Uh, Craig Morton. Who did Craig Morton play for? Uh, Cowboys, Giants, and Broncos. Who do you go to the Super Bowl with? Uh, um, looks like Giants and Broncos. Yep. Really? I'm guessing. Nope, Dallas and Denver. He went to the Super Bowl in Dallas, a yeah. starting QB? Yeah, Super Bowl five. Wait. Oh, I was like, damn, there's no way that was like, that That had to be like a long time ago. Yeah. I'm sitting there thinking like it was like maybe the 80s or 90s. It doesn't make any sense though. No, it was the 60s and 70s. That's wild, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. What about... Um, um, so they're saying that the Colts are going to sign Philip Rivers and move on from Jacoby Brissett. Well, yeah. And do you think Jacoby Brissett could go play in New England? That would be interesting. Yeah. I don't think he would be as good as people think he would be. Yeah. Like, do I? I have a place where I think Jacoby Brissett would be good. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay. Yeah, I agree. Give him the right out. I think if Bru- if if anybody any QB in the NFL goes to Bruce Arians, and they have some talent, right? Like Jacoby Brissett showed in the beginning of the year he could play starting QB, and then the second half of the year was he got, he got injured, he got injured. Didn't he? and then after that he was bleeding. Yeah. So if anybody with a good attitude goes to Bruce Arians, I feel as if they're gonna be like phenomenal. Exactly. And that's like my big thing, like especially against Jacoby Brissett. Jameis Brissan. Winston got a Lasix today too. Did you see that? Isn't that crazy to think about? Maybe, maybe that's why he threw so many picks. But that's what I'm saying. Like thirty touchdowns with bad vision, thirty interceptions with bad vision. My man's just throwing it up at that point. <laughs> He's like, what? Hey, hey. We'll well, what is he? What does he throw next year? Does he come out and throw fifty and ten, fifty no. touchdowns, ten interceptions? No. I'm going to say he could, he's going to come out and throw like 35 and 15. Who's he play for? That's going to be the hard one. If you tell me he's going to throw 35 and 15, mm-hmm. I could see it as a Buccaneer. Yeah. Because you have Mike Evans, who's yeah. a great wide receiver. You have Chris Godwin, who's a great wide receiver. You know what I'm saying? Assuming they improve offense line a little bit more. What if they went to and- Dallas? Running back. What if James went to Dallas? Yeah. It would be a clusterfuck. Think so? James, so right now we have Kellen Moore in. Mm-hmm. Kellen Moore is good to be the offensive coordinator when it is Dak Prescott. Yeah. He would be good for Dak Prescott. He'd be good for Patrick Mahomes. He would be good for Teddy Bridgewater. Bridgewater, maybe even Baker Mayfield. 
you get what I'm saying? Because he's a he's a fast paced offense kind of guy, and that's what all those guys ran in college and competed yeah. with, right? Yeah. But I'm still a Baker fan. <laughs> but like, um, who were we just talking about? What was his name? Kellen Winslow. Kellen Moore. Dak. Besides Kellen Moore, Dak Prescott, Jameis Winston. Before. James Winston. Pat Mahomes. James Winston, no, I, I don't think he could do that. Yeah. I think James Winston I, – I don't really see James Winston as being like a starting QB in the NFL. Good. I don't see him being like a, a great QB. Now, statistically, is he great? Yeah, absolutely. He's a killer. So With his interceptions and the can, how cancerous he is, yeah. I don't think he's going to improve too much over what he's at right now. I'm going to hit you with some rumors – Going around. You ready? Hit me. Trello and says he wants to be a chief. I love it. He said I that, doubt it. That would be a certain circumstance where he would come and play in the NFL, is in Kansas City. I love the idea of Terrell Owens. I doubt that anybody's going to give Terrell Owens a chance. I, I would. If, if I was Kansas City. Yeah. I would as well, but he said he wants to play forty snaps a game too. Like he's like, I want to be a star on that team. That's and the problem. He would be a star on that team. That's Hands that's down. the problem. Let's look at let's look at the reality of it, right? Trell Owens isn't on the team because he's you know perceived cancerous. Yeah, I mean, kind of is. You know, a little bit. Like he he's a walking like shit storm of drama. Yeah, right. Andy Reid's already experienced that once. There's no way that Andy Reid's like, yeah, you know what? Terrell, buddy, let me give you another chance. <laughs> if Andy Reid wants to guarantee himself not to win a Super Bowl, probably bring on Terrell Owens. <laughs> I'm just being honest because it's just like, I don't see Terrell Owens getting any better in the locker room. Right? See, I but mean, I don't I see any, because in that locker room, who's the quarterback that he had who he's button heads with? Cole Pepper? He had Donovan McNabb. McNabb. He also had Tony Romo, which he was good with Tony Romo at first, but Tony Romo and Jason Witten started to develop a relationship and started yeah. going out on vacation together, shit like that. Yeah. Prolones got jealous. That's the weirdest thing you could say about a grown man, about another grown man. Now, now what about Dez going to Kansas City? Because that's a rumor, too. I could see that. Yeah. Dez, the reason why Dez's situation is different is because now Dez is like, let me play around really good players for once. Yeah. Like, like, just give me the chance. I will be the third guy. I yeah. don't mind about that. I guarantee you I will kill it. Now like, he it. wants to be where Jason Witten was this year. Like, bring him on as, like, kind of like a coach flex. Exactly. But let me, he's let still me, athletic uh, enough to be a starter, so put him in at third string so he kills it. Two more Chiefs news for you. You ready for this? Let's hear it. Chris Harris Jr., cornerbacks, retweeted to, at Kansas City a video of NFL Network saying, hey, Chris Harris Jr. would be a good fit for the Chiefs. And he said, yeah, I agree. So now Chris Ooh. Harris Jr. might be a Chief next year. Who's he currently playing for? Broncos. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Mahomes is a magnet at this point. Like, he's a free agent magnet. People are going to want to play with Pat Mahomes. You know, though, that's how it is for, like, LeBron James, right? Yeah. People want to play with LeBron, you know. So you why play. not Why not want to play with Mahomes? Yeah. It makes sense. I get it. Another, Pat Mahomes wants to implement a behind-the-back pass in a game. Watching him throw a side pass, I believe he can do it pretty well. I'd be willing to bat. They dropped the video of him throwing it. It looks like he can throw it a good solid 15 accurate yards. Like a 15 accurate yard pass? Yeah, behind the bat. That's all he needs. He said he That's wants all to, he needs. Uh, they said it would be a good idea on like conversions near the goal line. You just roll out and scoop a little back behind the back pass to Travis Kelsey to run it up the middle. Like That'd be unbelievable. Think about it like this. You're on the 30-yard line going into the end zone. Yeah. Take a get down. Set. 
Hike it. Hike. Roll out Boom. to your right. And you're rolling Drops out to out your to right. right. Kelsey's drawing a post from the left side up and in, right over the middle. Pat Mahomes is rolling out, faking a defender because he just does no looks for no reason, and then just <laughs> right behind Pat his back. Pat Mahomes bed. is running it as if he's going to scramble. Yeah. He hits. He's right about the steel line of scrimmage. Yeah. And then boom, right around the back. Kelsey's catching it at the 10 or at the 20, basically. He'd have to be wide and open. He's taking it in. He's taking it in. Yeah. There's no way he's not. You, he'd have to be wide open. He's he, You'd have to score on that. All right. Got some draft news for you. This one I don't know if you've heard about. Redskins Talk are talking about trading for the number two pick in the draft. Why? So Miami Dolphins are working on a trade with the Redskins for the number two pick. So Miami wants the number two pick right oh, now. Oh, Miami wants the number yeah. two pick. Why? I can see that. Mm. Two is not going to be gone. I don't think. I don't think they want to. Huh? You think they want Chase Young? That could be big. What if Cincinnati picks up Chase Young? That'd be shocking. That'd be the dumbest move Cincinnati's ever made. Why, though? Because Burrow is the man. Why pick up Burrow, though, when you can literally pick up Teddy Bridgewater? You See, I up... I agree with that 100%. I love Teddy Bridgewater, but I don't think people feel the same way about Teddy Bridgewater as me and you feel about Teddy Bridgewater. I've liked Teddy Bridgewater his whole career. I liked him... <laughs> I was heartbroken when he tore his ACL. I wanted the Chiefs to draft Teddy Bridgewater. I wanted the Cowboys to draft Teddy Bridgewater. I love. We picked up Zach Martin instead. I don't even know who we picked up in that draft. Like I have no clue. But I'm, I'm or maybe happy. we took up. Maybe we picked up Travis Frederick instead. One of those. Two. I think it was Zach Martin. Because I remember I was like, a guard from Notre Dame. What? Yeah, Bridgewater. This stinks. Or maybe Bridgewater got picked stinks. up. Stinks. It was crazy though. What? So that draft, Sammy Watkins was taken fourth. Blake Bortles was taken second. Imagine being Jacksonville, knowing you could have had Khalil Mack, and you took Blake Bortles. Think about that. Awful. Or the Bills, knowing you could have had Khalil Mack, and you took Sammy Watkins. What about St. Louis taking Greg Robinson, whenever you could have had Jake Matthews, Taylor Luan, um, who else? Who else? Who else? Okay, here, here. I found this though. Man, picks nine to seventeen in the 2014 draft was amazing. Anthony Barr, Eric Ebron, Taylor Luan, nice. Odell Beckham, Aaron Donald, Kyle Fuller, Ryan Shazier, Zach Martin, and C.J. Mosley. So are you taking Zach Martin or Teddy Bridgewater? Zach Martin. Yeah, me too. Because now you can have them both. Yeah. So here, here's what makes me mad. I'm listening. Chiefs picked up D Ford. Oof. Hate that guy. Literally the whole reason. Whenever they could have had Demarcus Lawrence. I would rather have Demarcus Lawrence over D Ford. Yeah, but Demarcus Lawrence didn't really like pop off till like last year. Still, I would rather had Demarcus Lawrence in three years. You know, if they pick, if he was good last year, guess what? As long as he doesn't jump off sides, that's probably a Super Bowl. <laughs> it's probably a Super Bowl. Oh, it makes me so mad to think about. It. Makes me so mad. This draft was kind of a bust. Telvin Smith was drafted in the fifth round. He's really good. Yeah, Jaguars, oh. right? Yeah. Aaron Murray was drafted in this draft. Hate him. <laughs> you showed me a meme that looks like a butt is pooping, and I think that is funny. That's humor right there, man. It says, note to self, don't microwave these in the oven. Or don't microwave... <laughs> Don't microwave these. Here's a here's some more stuff. In the um, Shaquille Barrett, you know him, nice. right? He was, he was attack, un- baby. undrafted. Damn. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. 
you're pretty cool. But yeah, so they want to trade their pick. They're working on it, and which here's what would be crazy: Giants could actually get Chase Young at that point. That would be insane. A lot of people are saying that Chase Young is a bust. I don't agree with that whatsoever. I don't either. Now, let me be honest. Do I think Chase Young... I think Chase Young is going to be... Like, Javion Clowney was, like, really good coming out of college. Yeah. And was the number one guy. Yeah. Do I think Jadavion Clowney, like, lived up to everything he's supposed to be? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. But is he a solid NFL player? Yes. Is he really good on defense? Yes. There you go. <laughs> You you expect him to come out and be like the next Clomac? I don't think he's that, but I think he's pretty good. Yeah. That's why I think about Chase Young. So if you spend a first round pick on Chase Young, as long as you don't pay him too much, he's going to be a good pickup. You know, I'm reading more. Taysom Hill says he wants to be a starter in the NFL, and if the Saints pick him over Bridgewater, I'm gonna be a little upset. I would be, like, shocked, yeah. to be honest. And I saw that, and um, you know what? I'm going to be honest. Bring him to Dallas. Taysom Hill? Bring Taysom Hill to Dallas. Imagine him in Kansas City. Worthless. You think so? Yeah, he doesn't want – he wants to play starting QB. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. You think he'd start – That's the problem. He's not he's – not, there's no way he's signing with – Oh, no way he's going to play as starting. Yeah, that's that's Taysom Hill's thing. Taysom Hill said, "I want to be a starting QB in this league." And if the Saints aren't behind that, I want out. Would you put a hundred dollars down on the Giants to win the Super Bowl next year? What's the over under? A hundred to one odds. So you put down a hundred, and you'd make ten thousand. Think so? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That does make sense, doesn't it? Two and two. Okay, yeah. A thousand. No. Ten thousand. Yeah. Make it no. I don't see it happening. Ten thousand one hundred dollars. <laughs> Ten thousand one. Ooh. Because you get your hundred dollars back. Yeah. That's pretty neat, though. Yeah. Who would you bank on winning the Super Bowl next year? Well, Chiefs have a six to one odds, and if you bet a hundred, you make seven hundred. So that'd be a pretty good bet. Honestly, I think it's too early to tell. Like, I mean, obviously, if you just based on this year, I think Chiefs could back to back it. But like, it's just like, oh, they have the second lowest odds, tied with the Lions and the Dolphins and the Panthers. With Redskins and Bengals being 200 to 1. You said Lions, Dolphins, and the Panthers? Yeah. What are all those? 100 to 1. They're 100 to 1 as well? Yeah. Oh, that's whack. What about the Redskins and the Bengals? 200 to 1? Imagine if you put 100 on the Bengals. They go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. And you make $20,000. I think... Hmm. Here's a question. What ever happened to, uh, oh boy, left tackle for the Redskins? You remember what I'm talking about? Trent Williams. He said he'll never play another down in Washington. Yeah, so what is he? Is he is he going into free agency or what? Yeah. He's going into free agency. He said he will never play another down in Washington. Oh, wait, hold on. Trent Williams and Ron Rivera have begun talk about to Redskins. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That man just said the other day he'll never play another down. I said, what? Ron Rivera has made it clear that Trent Williams is a part of the Redskins' plans going forward. The plan Ron Rivera probably coaches. fired the entire injury prevention staff and the entire medical staff and was like, yeah, you're done here. <laughs> All right. That's crazy. Let's see. Hmm. Let 
That's that's absolutely wild to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I don't see. I don't think it's gonna happen. What did he get franchised last year? I don't know what happened last year. They pretty much treat him like Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, basically. It's crazy. What do you think Le'Veon Bell is going? Because I know, I know, I've heard a lot of people say that he's not going to be a Jet again next year. Oh my gosh! He could go to Tampa. That's possible. Hmm. But here, yeah. here's the problem with Le'Veon Bell. So they want to trade him, right? Yeah. So they want to trade Le'Veon Bell. Problem with that is. The problem of wanting to trade Le'Veon Bell is the fact that you have a – oh, gosh. Is that you have Todd Gurley and David Johnson, who are both on the market as well. Todd Gurley is as well? Yeah, Rams said they want to trade Todd Gurley away. Oh, they want to trade yeah. – my first thought was if he's a free agent – could you imagine how much he's going to ask for, considering he's been one of the top three running backs in the past couple of years? Yeah, like every year. Yeah. So, like, how much is how much is that guy going to ask for? He's going to he would ask for it a lot. Let's see. What's he making right now? I feel like I like off season news better than regular season news because it's like everything's like, well, what if? Well, what if? Well, what if? Makes you ask a lot more questions. I like what if in NFL a lot. Love what if. Yeah. So, I'm looking at all these articles right now. Um, Todd Gurley's $45 million guaranteed with 2.3 in 18, 9.6 in 19. All right, so Le'Veon Bell said him and Adam Gase had a, a sit down, yeah. and he said everybody's blowing everything out of proportion. Water under the bridge. We're fine. We good. Yeah. Jets for four more years unless something drastic changes. Okay, that's crazy. So he's gonna probably end up with the Jets again, but for some reason, I feel as if Adam Gase is like kind of a piece of shit. I agree. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's a good head coach, to be honest. I do, I don't either. Isn't it kind of crazy to think about that Jamal Adams was pissed at Adam Gase for like testing the water to try to get Zach Martin, and then afterwards, when he found out it was to get, try to pick up Zach Martin, he was like, "Oh damn, damn dude, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you really do think I'm good." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like. He was still looking to trade you, though. Like, you think if, like, New England got a call to, like, like maybe three years ago. Yeah. Let's put it like this. If Robert Kraft got a call three years ago looking for a trade of Tom Brady, do you think he's honestly going to, like, even consider anything? Well, hold on. What about, um... Maybe what, what about A.J. Green? How's he looking? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got something for you. I got something for you. Ready? Yeah. So, Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Trade Amari Cooper after. So they franchise Amari Cooper. Trade Dak Prescott. Now nah, you'd have to, you'd have to sign one of them and franchise the other. So, whichever one. Trade Dak to Dak and Amari Cooper to the Redskins for a second round pick in Trent Williams. And then you sign Teddy Bridgewater. Wait a minute. Say that all over again. So you sign and franchise Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper, right? Okay. Then you trade them both. Because at that point, once you franchise them, you franchise trade. And then just straight up trade after you signed him to the Redskins for Trent Williams in a second round pick. No, it's not worth it. Trent Williams is the left tackle. 
We have Tyron Smith. You don't think Trent can bounce over? To right tackle? Anything on the line. We don't need him. Man, I just think it'd be unstoppable. And then you sign Bridgewater. Because you're getting value out of Dak. Whenever at this point, it seems like you're going to let him walk anyways. And then same thing with Cooper. Like, you don't really need him. And I mean, you can pick up somebody better in the draft because you have in the top 15 picks. So at that point, you could probably sign old boy out of Alabama, who's probably going to be a better wide receiver than Cooper. You get some value out of both of those. You get a second pick. You get a good, like, offensive lineman. And here's my thing. Trent Williams is good, but Trent Williams is also old. He's yeah. got a couple injuries he's working on. He's been under that shitty Washington Redskins training staff for many years. Yeah. Number one, we got Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith is a beast. He's fine. Zach Martin at guard. He's fine. Travis Frederick at center. He's fine. Uh, other tackle is, um, I can't think of his name right now. He's from LSU. You're more than your successes. You're more than your failures. You got what was that? You got his you got his name up or no? Who? <laughs> Cowboys right tackle. Don't worry about it. I'll look it up. I thought you were <laughs> No, it started playing an ad, which is definitely gonna be able to be heard. Oh really? Yeah. That's why. It it's weird, man. It's weird. Cowboys yeah, right no, I tackle get it. is me. It's Nick. Huh? All uh, this time. Lyle okay. Yeah, of course. As soon as I pulled it up, it's Lyle Collins, and Lyle Collins is a beast. As well, he's made it. He's made a lot of strides. The only one left is left guard, and that's Connor Williams. Yeah. And Connor, Connor Williams is still good. I don't. Is he as good as um, Williams? Yeah. No, absolutely not. All um, right, all right. I got something for you. I got a better one for you then. Franchise, trade Cooper. To Washington for Landon Collins, the safety. Who are we trading? Amari. Cooper. Amari Cooper. You're going to franchise tag him. And how many? Him. How many years is Landon? Co- Landon. Four years. Got him for four years. This He's is hella expensive right now. Though. Like he got signed for a boatload. Yeah. I don't like that trade just because Landon Collins is so expensive. He's such a good safety, though. He is, but you got to think, though. I mean, like, let's say this. If we don't get Dak Prescott, we're going to pick up a young QB from the free. Yeah. And it's going to be expensive. Teddy Bridgewater, if he leaves New Orleans, he's going to want money. He is taxing. Think about it, man. The man played like what? Eight games last five year? Games. Nine games last year? Five games. And he was. He only played five games? It was five games and he went five and out. Five and out in five games. Yeah. They didn't lose again until Drew Brees was in. Exactly. What do you average per game? Like 230 yards? Something crazy. Like, he was good. Well, here's the thing he had a couple of low games, right? Then he had some really high games. Yeah. So, Teddy now, Bridgewater see, the is problem charging. Is, there's not a lot of like safeties on the market right now. So you guys would have to go to the draft in order to p- pick someone up. Unless you're going Jeff Heath. You want Heath again? Bring him back. I love Heath. What about Anthony Harris from Minnesota? He's really good. He's a free agent. Didn't we just pick somebody up from Minnesota last year too? Couldn't tell you. Maybe. Yeah, we picked up some safety from Minnesota last Jeff year. And didn't do anything. Hold on. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. I'm interested. Okay. One guy, one guy. I wish my internet would load faster. Like, it's not loading fast enough. I'm looking at that right here. Make me conversation. Um... You know when you're hanging out with your brother on a podcast? Yeah, me too. Hey, that's crazy. Hey, that's crazy. Hey, that's crazy. Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods didn't come from Minnesota. I don't know. That's the only guy I was looking at as your safeties. 
I can't even think, man. They picked up somebody. They picked up somebody from um, some other team. What about from from Minnesota? Kim like the Frazier, at least I thought Donovan Wilson, Darian Thompson. I don't even know, That's man. All you got. That's all you got. Let's let's look. What about Sammy Watkins saying he was gonna like just take the year off? I hate that. Yeah, I don't like that either. Take the pay cut, or you're gonna get cut at that point. Honestly, boom. That's just me, though. I just don't understand. I don't even know. You're playing for one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. No matter what your talent level is at that point, you're making millions of dollars. You're playing for one of the best um, people. In, in, you're playing for one of the best teams in the league. You're going to get money just based on being in media appearances. Like If you win another Super Bowl, that's more media. They're gonna have to pay. You're also, you're also with the best QB in the league, exactly. so you're gonna put up stats that you're probably unless, unless Sammy Watkins goes to New England, you're not gonna put as good as stats up. Yeah. If he goes to New England, I think he puts up better stats than he does in Kansas City. Well, that's just because, because New England doesn't have a real number one receiver. Like you know, Tyreek Hill is the number one. Travis Kelsey is one of the number ones. Well, Edelman would be the number one receiver, right? Maybe. But, like, literally, let me put it like this, man. You put any half-decent receiver in um, in New England, he's at least catching 800 yards. Yeah. If Deion Branch can go to a Super Bowl with Tom Brady in his elder years, I don't have any doubt that you couldn't put anybody in there. I mean, think about it, man. You took Randy Moss, who's a good, good wide receiver, let's be real. And he went from being, like, just good to legendary in that, like, little bit of time. Because he just broke, like, every other record with Tom Brady that year. So, you got to imagine. You got to imagine. Think about it. I just don't see, like, just build the dynasty, man. I agree. Well, for I like you, the idea of would it be about mind. like if you played in the NFL? Would it be about the dynasty or would it be about the money? Depends. It really, really, really depends. Say Pat Mahomes is your quarterback. Is it about the dynasty or is it about the money? Am I starting? I'm starting. I'm starting left tackle. Right? Yeah. Starting left tackle. Patrick Mahomes is my boy. I believe in Patrick Mahomes. I know he's gonna be. He's gonna have an amazing career, yeah. especially with me blocking him. That's in my mind. Yeah. Like, I think, like, if I'm Eric Fisher, right? I'm the I'm dog. Like, Yo, I'm killing it right now. Maybe go. Somebody I'm feeling else. good. Maybe, maybe go with right tackle. If I'm if I'm Mitch Schwartz, I'm thinking. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Even Eric Fisher. Yeah. Even Eric Fisher, bro, because when you guys lost him, you paid for it. When you got him back, did you read the stat? Yes. No Chiefs stats offensive given. line had hella, like hundreds of pass plays. Yeah. And no, not one sack was allowed by the offensive line. Unbelievable. Now, I assume, I'm going to reach out on the line. Jim Mahomes got sacked, right? Yeah. But I'm assuming it was off of a blitz from the outside, and it was more on the running back and not on the offense line. Yeah. No offense lineman got beat this season to get sacked. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's crazy. You did not take one real L this year. You didn't. You did not lose the battle enough for your QB to get sacked. That's Patrick Mahomes, starting offensive line, or is that including backups? That, like, that's including backups. Oh, man, I don't know how much I believe that stat thing because I watched him every game this year. Austin Ryder was not very good. Or maybe it was starting. I don't know. Maybe It's, it's probably maybe it just start. starting because they, they had a backup center who got injured later in the, like in the middle of the year. Guy was so bad. 
Like he was so bad. Hold on. Like people cheered when he got injured. That's how bad he was. Nah, bro. Seven hundred and fifty-seven blocking pass blocking snaps, zero sacks allowed. Seven hundred and fifty-seven. Hey, don't warm those in the microwave. Don't don't warm those in the microwave. <laughs> seven hundred and fifty-seven, bro. That's not the offensive line. Who's that? That's just Mitch Schwartz alone. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, never mind. That's just the right tackle. That's just Mitch Schwartz. That guy's a beast. Oh. But. So, yeah. Because I, I know for a fact Eric Fisher gave up, like, at least five. Bro, I'm retarded, bro. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was. You know what it was? Because they didn't even put on there. They just put football, NFL, Kansas City Chiefs, O-line pride, linemen lead the way. Yeah. They didn't put Mitch Sports on there. Yeah, just his face. Yeah, just his face. Because I was sitting there trying to figure out. I was like, who is this? Yeah, I was thinking Mitch Schwartz. But I didn't know if that no. was like, man. Bro, like legit. I'm retarded. Now, let's move on to some XFL right after I read you some tweets. Read me those tweets, Bobby. Hashtag Chiefs just made the dumbest move of the draft. Mahomes has a cannon, but he freelances too much. Thank you. I'm sorry. Reed. Read that one more time. Chiefs just made the dumbest move of the draft. Mahomes has a cannon, but freelance is too much. Thank you, Andy Reid. Now Giants won't make the mistake of taking Pat Mahomes. Damn. Chiefs fan stupidity is amazing. Between bites of gas station pastries, this guy thought comparing Paxton Lynch with Pat Mahomes was an insult to the Broncos. They are starting their shitty project, project quarterback. That's the biggest difference between them. The Holmes is more Cutler than Favre. Ooh. Neither of those are accurate. Bob Fesco just said he thinks Baker Mayfield will have a better season than 2018 than Pat Mahomes. Yeah, we all agree. Oof. I wouldn't have believed that when whenever they, they said that. Probably photoshopping himself on other teams' jerseys to see how he looks and wondering why Mahomes gets so much love for that game after playing no better than Lynch did. Paxton Lynch. Damn, dude. Yeah. These are all about Mahomes? Yes, these are all about Pat Mahomes. Dude. dude. Got more for you. Watson, with an ACL injury, is greater than Pat Mahomes. Oof. I do like Watson, though. I think he's a good QB. He's a good QB. I'm going to be real, though. Yeah. This You reading this, you got to get hungry. Like, you got to immediately want. Yeah, if you're Pat Mahomes, you're sitting there yeah. and reading these, you're like, here's why I do not like Mahomes. He's not a winner. Oof. I don't believe Mahomes will be good. He has talent around him, but he won't elevate anyone's play. Not to the level that Chiefs fans expect. You know what, though? To be fair, that that's like the nicest thing someone's has said. He has like, talent. Like that, he, yeah, he's good, but he's not going to be as good as Chiefs fan want, want him to be. That's like the well, nicest said, thing I don't said. believe Mahomes will be good. That's what he said. I don't, I don't believe Mahomes will be good. I just don't think he's as good as Chiefs fans want him to be. That's, that's well, a nice Holmes thing. Holmes would throw say. 60 interceptions in the Chiefs offense. Wow. And the Chiefs changed their offense. Isn't that crazy? I get that you like Pat Mahomes and his big arm, but how can you watch him and say he has a feel for the position? How do you Ouch. think he's going to be efficient? That's like all this is like hurtful. I was asked today to think of a Mahomes comparison. Don't think there's a good one. Went with Derek Carr, but Carr is better at creating outside of a structure, so that's not good either. Trade Pat Mahomes. That was a big one. Just trade Ouch. Pat Mahomes. Ouch. Kaiser, Trubisky, week one. Watson, week 10. Mahomes, 2026. That's... Damn. If Kaiser starts in week one, when do you think Mitch Trubisky, Deshaun Watson, and Pat Mahomes all start? That's hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. That... Ow, man. Front offices will rue the day 
they selected Trubisky and Mahomes ahead of Deshaun Watson. Half correct. Half correct. Half correct. Wow. Doesn't take much for you guys to adopt a hero. When he wins that 50th game as a chief or takes him to the playoffs, then I'll be impressed. Cha-ching. Josh, he didn't do anything in college. I know what I see. He's going to throw a lot of interceptions. He trusts his arm. So did Manning. Did he just compare him to Peyton? Yep. What? <laughs> These are back whenever he was drafted. This is 2017. Ouch. These are... <laughs> like, Mahomes. he just dissed him and Manning. Mahomes. Weird. Goodness. In reality, he's the worst quarterback in the division. Week, one game in Week 17 versus Denver does not make him better than Derek Carr or Case Keenum or Phillip Rivers. That's wild. <laughs> Mahomes might be the most overrated quarterback next to Jared Carr. That was in 2018. He won the MVP that year. <laughs> Mahomes overrated. He just black Alex Smith. Is that a real professional? <laughs> I don't know if that one's a professional. But... That that sounded like just some kind of like, man, he just black Alex Smith. The idea that the Chiefs offense is going to be well oiled is irresponsible they're just a high school offense remind you chip kelly yeah chip kelly's an idiot i wouldn't have i wouldn't have listened to that bro i love these i could read these are like you don't have to but 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 But, okay. Sorry, I'm still reading these. Okay. They're done at the end now. That's about it. Okay. How about we talk about the XFL? Landry Jones, starting quarterback in the XFL. Two weeks before he was a starting quarterback in the XFL, he was a woodworker. He was, he was a construction worker. He went from construction to starting quarterback in the XFL. That's nice. Isn't that cool? That is nice. XFL's making dreams, man. Who did Landry Jones start for this week? Started for the Dallas Renegades. What in the heck? Also, in the XFL. XFL I don't see him. Makes... Landry Jones. Yeah. He plays quarterback, doesn't he? Yeah. He's good. He's did he good. start for the Renegades? I don't think he did. He did. No, he didn't start. He had to sit out because he was injured. His like shoulder was hurting or something like that. I don't know. There we go. Because I'm looking. I'm like, yo, Landry Jones is not on. The- he, but he'll see. He's starting in week two. Here, average and XFL players make fifty thousand. Top quarterbacks make half a million. Did you hear how much Colin Kaepernick asked for? He asked for like forty million, didn't he? Twenty million from the XFL. Stupid. I that guy does not want to play football. He doesn't want to play football. That's all. He does not want to play football. Yeah. I think. I think Colin Kaepernick is like a. Like like a bill collection right now, right? Yeah. Like if you don't pay your collection for like seven years or whatever, it's wiped. But if you like, even make try to make contact with them, yeah, you're like going to be held accountable for like seven years, or like not contact. But if you like make a payment, try to set up a payment arrangement or something like that, it's boom. So like every time someone reaches out, hey Colin, are you interested in playing in in the AAF? Yeah, I'm interested. Okay, well, salary is seventy thousand dollars, just like everyone else. Yeah. 
Nah, man. Nah, I, I don't want it. I want, I want 100 million. Stupid. Listen, let's be real. People are going to watch the XFL or the AAF with Colin Kaepernick in there. This is how he talks. People are going to watch it with Colin Kaepernick in there. The reality is, is does Colin Kaepernick want to play for your league? No, I don't think he does. <laughs> Unless you're going to offer $100 million. No? Your loss. And now all of a sudden he goes out into the news. Colin Kaepernick's on. Man, XFL don't want me because I'm black. <laughs> After the NFL blackballed me. Now it's the XFL, XFL blackballing me. XFL won't accept me. I'm just trying to make twenty million. He's gonna go to the uh like the women's football, he's gonna be like, Hey, look. I'm Colin Kaepernick. You know who Colin Kaepernick is. Colin Kaepernick's gonna go play for the women's football league, light it up, and then come out and say, Look, I told you I should <laughs> still be playing in the NFL. Told you. Told you I'm the best. Like like Colin Kaepernick goes into the women's football league, no one's gonna let's be real about it. Yeah. Like he would be the greatest of all time in women's football. Easy, hands yeah. down. Yeah. And then after that, people would be like, "Yo, he still had it." They'd be like, he still had it. "Kobe, you know, R.I.P." They'd be like Kobe coming back like a year ago. Yeah, playing in the WNBA. Destroying Killing everyone, Told you. and then people being like, "Yo, Kobe could come back to the NBA next year." Probably not. Probably not. Probably not to the extent you're thinking. So, week one, St. Louis and the Vipers had more than a hundred total rushing yards. Everyone nice. else thought you win by passing in the XFL, but St. Louis. Took it to the ground, and they were eaten. So, same. So let's 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 do this. Let's take it from back to front, right? Sunday night, you have St. Louis Battle Hawks versus the Dallas Renegades. Yeah. Let's just cover what it is. Football. The St. Louis Battle Hawks game in the Dallas Renegades most. The, the the best moment of the game was the intro to the Dallas Renegades. They come out. Everybody's on like this Harley-esque type motorcycle. And they all take off. And then here, your Dallas Renegades. Ah, everybody's flipping out. It was a great intro. Yeah. After that, it sucked. Garbage mistakes. Garbage QB play on both sides. Yeah, the game was a little better than me. Everything about the game was horrible. Like, nobody got over 100 yards receiving. Can we we just straight up say it? Saturday's games were way more entertaining than Sunday's games. 100%. Seriously. 100%. Matt Jones was the best thing. Yeah. Or, yeah, Matt Jones was the best thing. Was the best thing in that game. Yeah, it was now much Houston right. Roughnecks quarterback threw four touchdowns in almost 300 yards. Speaking of which, and he's so only five foot eleven. Let's this. Let's let's talk backwards, back to front. I'm yeah. let's start with the Battle Hawks. Let's talk about the Vipers versus the Guardians. Matt McGloin looked good. Like he just looked good. He didn't look great. He didn't look amazing. He looked good. Vipers defense gave up a lot of big plays. Vipers defense gave up like three big plays. Yeah. Three big plays. Mac McGloin has an okay game just because of three big plays. Mm. Aaron Murray, garbage. Yeah. And Aaron Murray still passed for 231 yards. Aaron Murray Aaron Murray's day to day now though. He's day to day with like an injury. injury wise. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Caught him. Good. So here's another thing for you. Cardale Jones, baby. Love him. I'm kind of bouncing around right now, so it's all right. I noticed. It's all right. Cardale Jones, two touchdowns, 235 yards. 
He only played 11 games at Ohio State. <laughs> All right, cool. So the Wildcats and the Roughnecks played. Mm-hmm. It's crazy because the Roughnecks come out and the Wildcats, they're pretty much tied like the whole game. Like they're pretty, it's a, it's a close game the whole time. Then next thing you know, after the second half, Roughnecks come out, light it up, 37-17. It's crazy. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Defensive coordinator from the Wildcats gets fired after this first game because they gave up like 20 points in the second half. What do you think about that? Uh, I think you should have gave him one more game. You got to give him time to adjust to a second game. Like, it's your first game, man. But unless yeah. they had their eyes on another defensive coordinator, which I think that's like kind of what it sounds like. Like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of like this guy. So, yeah, definitely going to go with him. I mean, think about it like this. Like, it literally goes – Houston touchdown, no extra point. Yeah. L.A. touchdown, two point, uh, two point conversion. You LA remember touchdown. Though, that's also misleading with the conversions and stuff. Huh? The conversions and stuff are a little misleading just because it's like the first week, everybody had a different strategy for conversions and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Right, uh, I like the idea of it, but it was just weird, like the two, five, ten yard line. But yeah, but I like the idea of everyone having a different exactly that because it's like if I'm New England, like last year, I'm just gonna hand the ball up up the middle every time exactly, and let Sony Michelle or the fullback take it up. Yeah. Right, and if I'm like, you know. I mean, literally just any big passing. Like, if I'm, like, um, the Baltimore this year, I'm going five yards. Because I feel like if I tell Lamar Jackson to give me five yards, he can get me five. Exactly. Now, if I'm Pat Mahomes. I'm going from the 10. I'm going five yards in 10. I'm going to mix it up. Depending on where I'm at in the game and who I'm playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 24 to 0 doesn't sound that bad when you think of the fact that you can get three nine point plays. Yeah, 100%. You think about it. Boom, three touchdowns. You're winning by three points. That's a good position to be in. But, yeah. So. At halftime, though, L.A. and um, Houston are pretty much neck and neck. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's it, I mean, it's it's really close. And then Houston just pulls away with it. Houston just pretty much puts lights up the. L.A. gets shut out. I mean, if anything, why aren't we firing the offense coordinator? Yeah, that's a good question. Like. We're firing the defensive coordinator because he. LA literally doesn't put a single point up on the board in the third and the, the second half. Mm. That's wild. So, either way, Houston triumphs over the Wildcats. 37 17. Yes. All right, so, last game, one of the better games Seattle versus DC. DC Great and game. Seattle pretty much go back and forth for the majority of the game. And basically, DC just pulls away and starts scoring. Right. Cardale Jones DC. pulled away and started scoring. That's my dog right there. Cardale Jones is a beast. Love him. He has killer strength, like yeah. killer deep, deep throw accuracy. He had a lot of good trick plays and everything. You know, I think DC is going to definitely be one of the teams. Yeah, I could see him being one of the top teams. 100%. DC's going to be one of the top teams. But, um, I mean, literally... It's just... it's something about Cardale Jones, man. You put him in, and he's just going to play. He's just going to play. That's what he did it at Ohio State. You put him in, he played. Like, he played good. And I think that they played one of the only trick plays we saw, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's where it's kind of weird. You know, trick plays are it's exciting. crazy because yesterday I just saw kind of, um, or a couple days ago, Monday... I you know, some of my tweets I had out about 
the Orlando Magic or Magic, the Orlando Apollos game when they first came out. Hey, take aim, baby. Take aim. The Orlando Apollos, I was so excited watching them just because of how much they came out and dominated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we don't really have that right now. Bro- breaks my heart a little bit. Yeah. So let's 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 do a couple of takeaways, right? I'm watching the games this weekend, and it's huge because number one, the biggest thing that needs to be taken care of it's entertaining. Hundred percent. Every game was entertaining. I mean, maybe not the Dallas game. The Renegades game was not that entertaining. Yeah. But every game across the board up until then, even the Vipers game was entertaining. These guys are knocking the piss out of each other. The hits are huge. Which is funny to me because they're making like not a lot of money and they are laying their bodies out there right now. It's just like, yeah, we're just going to put our bodies on the line. Like, I don't care. We're just going to do it. (laughs) I don't even think the A, like in in physicality, I don't think the AAF was even close. Just for that one hit? In that game, you know which hit I'm talking about. That one hit was like every hit in the AAF. Yeah, the sack? Yeah, the big sack. But besides that, like every other play was huge. Yeah. Like when, like you just heard these guys just get heads. Yeah. You know, and to me, I'm just like, this is nuts. Yeah. It was insane. So it was entertaining. It's physical. There's no drama with it. The one thing that people need to realize, though, people will turn on these games and they go, wow, everybody's messing up. There's a lot of people messing up in their position. Here's the problem. These are people who haven't played in so long. When you watch the NFL play, summer camp, training camp or whatever, preseason, you guys, these guys in the NFL have been playing together for, yeah. with each other for years. Yeah. Maybe five players max changes starters every year, right? Yeah. Like, you're only – you're going to get a new wide receiver, you know, like like a new, from another team that is, that comes in. And, you get a new wide receiver, maybe a new cornerback, right? Mm-hmm. New safety. For the most part, though, everybody pretty much stays the same. Few key players change. So when you take that into consideration, there's only one extra piece or one or two pieces that need chemistry with that play or with that with, with, with that group. You know what I'm saying? These guys have never really played with each other. Yeah, they haven't had years to. They haven't played against each other, in, against any other people, except and, with each other as well. Exactly. So when you take it into consideration. The XFL is gonna a little look a little rough around the edges when it comes Yeah. Like miss assignments, things of that nature. But as years come together, about five years from now, it is gonna be a totally different league by then. Exactly. Even next year you had a whole year next year. together. Absolutely. So next year, the year after that. Here's my question yeah. right now for you. Go ahead. You want to go see the DC Defenders game on March first on Sunday? Sunday? Maybe. Tickets are cheap right now; they're like twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, but tickets are so cheap for the Roughnecks game. When's the Roughnecks game? Um, two weeks. Can't go. I know you can, but I'm saying tickets are so cheap. Yeah, I was just saying they're like twenty bucks right now, so I'm like, I know you work on Saturdays. It's the 22nd. I only work for the first half of Saturdays. And I'm my own boss. So I don't have to go. What time is that game, anyways? I'm just go. Yeah, it's a two. What a stupid I hope time. they have some night games, honestly. The DC Defenders game is a seven o'clock game. Mmm. Yeah. Hopefully the Vipers are good by then. <laughs> Hopefully we put in Quinn Flowers or something. I'd love to watch a good football game. And it'd be against Cardale Jones, too. But, um... So, let's see. 
entertaining, physicality, all that's beautiful. The game plans are good, the strategy. You have good professional. Yeah. I don't think there's really any. Like, the new rules are exciting. The yeah, the rules are cool, cool too. The punts are cool, you know? Like, everything about it was, like, just spot on, you know? Yeah, it's exciting stuff, man. It's a, it's a great league. After about 10 years, the pay increases because by then they're profitable. This league will be crazy. Yo, I found two really, really good tickets to the XFL DC Defenders game. How much? Corner of the end zone. Section A, seats one and two, so it's aisle seats. 40 bucks a piece. So it's the first it's the first thing on the field. It's like you field right in the corner of the end zone for 40 bucks a piece. That's pretty cool. Cheap. Yeah, but that's really low though too. What do you mean? Mm, you know what, never mind. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, that'll be fine. I sat in the end zone for um the box game. Yeah. Bucks versus uh, Dolphins preseason game. Yeah, it's a great, great seats. But I don't really see it. I don't see it as a bad seats in Raymond James. No, because it's only going up to the second tier. Yeah, it's pay the twenty five. There's no. Need, there's really no need to. Even, it's really not. There's just. I just thought it was cool. Bucks. Just thought it was cool. Twenty five bucks, bro. It's cheap. Twenty four bucks. Twenty four. Wow. So yeah, everybody who wants to come out to the XFL game, hit us up. Let us know. Got I'll even else? let you buy me a beer. Yeah, yeah, he will. 